Buddhist monks are not allowed to attend plays or performances, as this would get them deeper into Maya, the delusion of the physical world. Why would watching a film, attending a theater play, or listening to music be such a bad thing? After all, some of these can be instructional and provide a mirror that allows you to examine human existence from an observer perspective. The reasoning is said to be that this would mean indulging your senses, seeking pleasure for pleasure's sake, it would mean stoking desire, which followers of Buddhism are supposed to transcend. The effectiveness of an approach that aims to transcend desire via means of suppression, may be questionable. Does turning away from potential sources of pleasure really make the desire for pleasure go away? Will turning away from food when you're hungry make your hunger go away? Or will it make you even more aware of the emptiness in your stomach? That aside, there is a deeper logic behind this, which, with the advent of increasingly elaborate forms of virtual reality, is becoming ever more relevant in this day and age. Living in the third dimension, you are already living in a virtual reality. You chose to forget your spiritual nature beyond the physical world. This was done, so you could take part in a multi-sensory game, which involves trying to get back to where you came from without direct knowledge or recollection. By being born you essentially entered a maze, which you are supposed to explore with almost no conscious memory of the map for that maze. If you can manage to find your way around the maze with some degree of accuracy, you gain experience points for the next game. The more often you have done this exercise, the more experience you accumulate. With increasing experience it becomes easier to navigate your maze. Your subconscious knowledge of past lessons enables you to do so with increasing grace and dexterity. If you engage in a virtual reality beyond this, for example by getting lost in a computer game, TV drama, or other form of entertainment, you stop in your tracks and cease to explore the maze which you came down to explore. If you do so for a certain amount of time, that won't necessarily take you off course. So long as you hold on to your mission in the back of your mind whilst participating in this form of entertainment, you may even discover answers to some of the questions you have about your current, real-life problems. In other words, playing a game within the game may help you play the game of physical reality better. However, by becoming engrossed in the new virtual reality, you have become twice removed from your real self. Playing the game within the game may start taking up more and more of your time, until you all but stop exploring the maze of your life altogether. You are no longer wandering around, trying this door or that. You just stop in your tracks, staring at a device, and getting lost in the virtual reality of that device instead. The reason why this is bad news is, that the twice removed virtual reality you are losing yourself in was not created by spirit. It was not created by your higher self. It was not created by the divine. It was not created as a means for expansion. It was not created to help you find your way back home to the real world, the world of spirit. It was designed to pull you into its world. Deeper and deeper into Maya, the illusion of third dimensional reality. It was designed by beings, or through beings, who are already deeply steeped in illusion. Beings who, like yourself, are in a state of forgetting. Thus, the realities they invent could take you upwards, or down. They could take you to heaven, or they could take you to what is called hell. If you are committed to ascension, if you are committed to awareness, if you are remotely interested in improving your life, whether that is your physical life, or the spiritual life beyond, you should take great care not to fall into that trap. Think of life as going to the theater, or a concert by your favorite band. You are buying the most expensive ticket there is, and then sitting in your seat, playing a game on your phone. Not only are you missing the performance, as a matter of fact you were supposed to be one of the performers. That play just got seriously boring, one of the characters is not playing their part. That concert just got discordant, the lead guitarist, the first violinist, has failed to pick up their instrument. They're just sitting on stage, inactive, gawping at a device in their hands, not interacting with the other characters in their play. The others are doing their best, but it's just not the same. It was billed as, starring, insert your name, but the headliner has not showed up. What a disappointment. It's disappointing for the audience, disappointing for the other performers, and, most importantly, disappointing for you. 
You, who paid millions to be in this production. You, who has a loan to pay back when they die, but who has made no income, no return on their investment, because they preferred to get lost in a virtual bubble instead of playing their part. Will you be the headliner who fails to show up for their own life? Thank you.